One of the strongest and most articulate voices um, in the State House uh, for our Haitian communities uh, has been and continues to be Linda Dorsina Fori, State Representative. Uh, uh, I have stopped trying to keep up with her level of energy, um, uh, and I instead have tried to learn from her examples of leadership, uh, which she has so clearly demonstrated this past year. So it is my honor to introduce to you Representative Linda Dorsina Fori. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour, tout le monde. Um, I want to thank all of you for being here today. I want to thank Congressman Capuano for your words and your remarks, which are so true in terms of the work that lies ahead of us. I want to thank Governor Patrick for your leadership and your commitment to the Haitian community here in Massachusetts and for all the work that you've done over the last year. I want to thank Richard in appointing Richard as the point person in working on the issue. Thank you so much for all the work that you've done. Um, and Emmanuel Dupiton, thank you for the job that you continue to do here in Massachusetts. Um, I want to take this moment to thank all of you um, who are here, Haitian organizations, folks who work in Haiti, for your commitment and the hard work. Um, we know, and as everyone mentioned, the, 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 really the tragedy that struck. And so many people were affected, whether you were Haitian or not, you were touched but what happened at this, on this island. And so I thank you for being here um, in, the, in the middle of the day today. I want to acknowledge a few people who were here. Um, some of my colleagues, I saw Senator Sonia Chang Diaz, who's here, Representative Russell Holmes, who's also joined us, and also a host of reps and senators who care about the Haitian people and the Haitian community, whether they have Haitians living in their communities or not. Um, I want to recognize and acknowledge the leadership of also Mayor Menino for his work over the years, and want to take a special time really to honor our former rep and amazing advocate, Representative Marie St. Fleur, for her work. for her work, not just in the last year, as was mentioned, but throughout the years. And so we look forward to continue working together to making sure that the response in Haiti is what is needed for the people on the ground. Um, I want to take this time to um, thank the citizens of Massachusetts who gave so much, whether small or large, to show solidarity with our neighbors just 600 miles from our shores off of Florida. So much. Now we have to ask ourselves, what does the future of Haiti look like? And how can we support the rebuilding efforts? And I think Congress Capuano touched on that in terms of what is it that we need to do? We cannot rest on our laurels and say that it happened a year ago and now it has gone past and we can move on. The work continues. Even though Haiti is no longer on the front pages and on the news, we know that the work continues, not just here in Massachusetts, but on the island of Haiti. And so over the last year, we have seen how generous and caring people can be through donations from around the globe. We need to make sure that those dollars reach the people for whom they were intended. We, need, we also need to make sure that we don't just allocate money into organizations without requiring outcomes. In Massachusetts, we have the third largest Haitian population after Florida and New York. The Haitian people, the diaspora, are willing and able, the Haitians on the ground, are willing and able and available to participate in the reconstruction of Port-au-Prince and the redevelopment of Haiti. And we ask the organizations to include them in the process. Despite a great outpouring of community and government support, Haiti has continued to face immense challenges till this day. From the over 1.5 million people who still live in tents and tarps in Port-au-Prince, from the outbreak of the cholera that has hit this small island, the failure of some governments still to deliver the promised funding. Although it has almost been a year the thousands of individuals and families struggle every day with the remnants of the earthquake. 
and we must remember that and continue in the struggle to make sure that the outcomes are different in Haiti. I know that many of you have worked tirelessly, tirelessly since January 12th to help in the relief effort. And I wanna take this time to acknowledge and thank you. Thank you for your commitment and for your love for the people of Haiti. I know that you will continue to support Haiti because you know as I that rebuilding will not just take one month or one year. Rather, it requires a long-term vision and a commitment to rethinking the way we partner with Haiti. Moving forward, it will be critical to have an open dialogue. We must ensure transparency and accountability in the delivery and use of resources, but also participation from the Haitians on the ground and the diaspora must be part of the agenda. The U.S. is taking a leadership role in Haiti's recovery, and I thank our president for taking that step on January 12th and stepping up and saying we care about this island called Haiti. So we are taking a leadership role in its recovery, and I hope we continue to do that by paroling DHS-approved families with visas. 55,000 families in Haiti have already been approved by the U.S. government, have already gone through the whole process of being allowed here into this country. So I hope that we will work together with our Congress and our partners in government to say we need to do this for the Haitian people, the 55,000, because they've been approved, but also the condition in Haiti is unacceptable. And we need to allow them to come here so they're able to work and provide for their families. And so I talk about that because we know that over $1.6 billion annually are sent back to Haiti in remittances from the Haitian diaspora. As a child of Haitian immigrants, I'm first generation. My parents and my mother, we still send money to Haiti till this day because of my parents' brothers and sisters and his nieces and nephews. So every month, my parents, my father will call and say, okay, Linda, we're pulling money together this month to send money to Haiti. So there is, this is something we need to do to allow people to help folks sustain themselves. And so I thank you all. Mdu nou mesi an pil jodi ake nou la. Mta remesi. Mwe vle remesi. Mwe vle remesi Gouverneur Deval Patrick pou tout travay li fe jodi an. Li re pointe ou kone Richard Chokon ki chef recovery a isi an. Mta remesi Congressman Michael Capuano ki fe an pil travay pou nou no gouvernman federal la. Nda di nou mersi jodi a ke nou vin la jodi an pou nou montre ke komunite haïtien an son komunite ki fort an kou haïtien haïti. Nou gen pil travay pou nou fè, nou konen nou pap jam blye moun ki mouri yo. Me travay la fek komanse pou nou kebe ansam, pou nou met tet nou ansam, pou nou travay avet organizasyon kap fè bon bagay na haïti. So I look forward to working with all of you, putting our heads together to making sure that the people of Haiti have a voice, that the 250,000 plus people that have passed have a voice, and that the outcomes in Haiti will be different, and that we will empower the Haitian people, and we will employ the Haitian people, and we will train the Haitian people. So when the countries have left in terms of rebuilding the infrastructure, when they have gone, we have left something behind. We have left the workers behind so when the roads have broken, they can fix it. So I am grateful. I am grateful to all of you. Wendy Messi encore to all of you for all the work. And I thank our governor for your commitment. And I thank General Carter and sending our folks down there to help in the rebuilding effort. Thank you and God bless.